So to then take Christ out of that solution and say the comforter is someone else is an absolute insult beyond measure to, to the fact that Christ is the only way to the Father. It's basically say, thank you, Christ, you're the way, but there's actually another way called uh, the other comforter that you told us about. And, and we conclude that that's someone other than you is God, the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. The famous words of Jesus used over and over and over again to try and prove that the Holy Spirit is a different person to Christ. With people zoning in or, or you know, catching on the words, another comforter, another comforter. Another one is a different one. Uh, Jesus said that, so it must be someone else. That's just the, how the argument goes. You might have heard it yourself. Uh, <laughs> recently, even, it's, it's often repeated. What did Jesus mean? How can we understand it? Now, we've covered this. Uh, we've covered this time and again in a number of videos, a number of different uh, aspects and uh, the context. So today I will cover it also, but I'll cover it from hopefully a, a different perspective, a perspective that, that I haven't covered before that kind of stood out to me just recently. And this is why I wanted to share it with you. Uh, because uh, often the context is ignored. Uh, the explanation given by Jesus Christ himself, following this verse in the next few verses, where he says, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you, seems to be ignored. And people just latch on to these words, another comfort, like, uh, comforter. It's like, that's all they see. Uh, like I said, we've covered that in a number of videos, but today we want to look at it from another perspective. Before we go on, I just want to mention something. You know, you, you share with people the context and what Jesus says, and it's like they, they don't see past past that. It's like, you know, John 14 stops at verse 16. Look, there are many verses after verse 16 that explain it. So you explain it that way and people, that's it. All they see is another comforter and, and they latch on to that. Another thing to note, uh, to mention here as well is, is the word comforter itself. Uh, this is the first mention of the word comforter in the entire New Testament. Think about that. No other gospel writer, Matthew, Mark, Luke, none of them mention the word comforter whatsoever. It's only mentioned by John in his gospel here and uh, in his letter. It's only mentioned five times in, in the New Testament. Four of these times are in John's gospel, which is in this one discourse here where Jesus was speaking with his disciples uh, just at the, you know, at the Last Supper uh, period. Four times it's mentioned there. And then one other time, the fifth and last time, is mentioned in John's letter. In John's uh, letter, the elder John, of course, writing in 1 John. And I'm going to go to this verse in a minute, but I want us to keep in mind something. The first mention here, John 14, 16, and the last mention that we're about to read actually help uh, in that they don't contradict each other, they explain each other. Here it is, I'll show you what I mean. A familiar verse to many, but I want to use it in this context and then we can dive into our uh, subject matter that we'll address today. First John 2, 1, here's how John puts it. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And I've put it there, that word advocate is the Greek word for comforter, the parakletos, paraklete, comforter. It's the same word in John 14, 16 that we just read. Exact same word. So note this. John was there with Jesus, listening to his discourse in the Last Supper, hearing him speaking about the Comforter. He records the times that Jesus said the Comforter four times in his gospel. He heard Jesus. He understood Jesus. And here is his, his conclusion. Here is his understanding. In First John, writing and explaining to the reader that this advocate with the Father is none other than Jesus Christ the righteous. He is that comforter. He's the advocate. He is the comforter. That, that's con conclusive. Now, I, I'm not repeating this because I'm going into the detail of this. We've covered this, like I said, in a number of places. It seems like people still go back to John 14, 16 and ignore this very important point that John, the one who heard Jesus speaking that discourse, the one who records that discourse, the only one who records it, nobody else records it, is the same one who draws this conclusion, showing his understanding in 1 John, and still people go back to other comfort. Well, here is Christ speaking about the other comforter. It sounds like someone else, but who is he really talking about? In his prayer, he makes it very clear who it is. John already gave us a conclusion. This other comfort is none other than, than the advocate we have with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He already gave us a conclusion. That's John's understanding. So we kind of already, you know, uh, <laughs> established a conclusion before we start. But here it is from the prayer of Jesus. Jesus here speaking plainly to the Father, asking for the other comforter, actually says, it's I, in them. Who is the I in them? It's Christ. But which Christ? It is the glorified Christ. That's the difference. 
Because some people say, well, there, well what's it? there has to be a difference because it's different. It's another comforter. There is something different. Yes, there is definitely something different. This is the glorified Christ. Christ was not yet glorified when he was here on earth because he asked his father, Father, glorify me with the glory which I had with thee. So what you had here in the, in, on earth, while Christ was here on earth, was Jesus with his disciples, not yet glorified. So now in his prayer, he asks for glory so that he can impart it and share it with others so that he is glorified in the believer. He says, listen, this is the other comforter. So this other comforter is Jesus glorified in the believer as opposed to Jesus not glorified with the disciples. That's the difference. That's the other comforter. It's not a different identity. It's Christ in a different way, in a superior, better way than just being in the flesh with the people. That's the, this is the difference. People get so hung up and they want to make the difference so vast that they actually create a totally different person that replaces Christ and totally destroys this whole passage. And the prayer of Jesus is meaningless. And honestly, I, 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 I fail to comprehend how so many for so long read the prayer of Jesus, which is so eloquent, so plain, so simple, so straightforward, and come to the conclusion or hold to that conclusion because it's seen as a part. Like it would hold to the conclusion that the, that the identity of the comforter is a different individual to Christ. The, the prayer of Jesus is in the context of John 14. He, he doesn't stop speaking. It, it doesn't pick up on another day or the next event. This, it doesn't stop speaking. It's one discourse. You have to read it all in one context. 14, 15, 16, 17. They're basically all red letters. It's one sermon, one discourse, closing with a prayer that Jesus told them what the subject of the prayer is. It's the other comforter. He says, I in them. It's a case closed. And how many times you got to say it? How many times do you have to say it? And yet people are dull of hearing. People will still take that same passage. They will stop at John 14, 16 and, and not be able to see past it. And in so doing, they hinder not just their understanding, but the understanding of all those who believe them and therefore their faith. And as a result, their experience, the words of Jesus so plain are rendered mysterious and people end up seeking, looking for and crediting someone else other than Christ called God, the Holy Spirit. It's a tragedy. It's, abs it's an absolute travesty, honestly. When, 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 the, when the passage is so very, very clear.